So this video is going out to anybody who wants to continue their education in EMS or paramedic, or if you're interested in going to paramedic school. Now, I recently got my hands on this. Uh, there's two of them, okay? This is the Nancy Caroline 9th edition. It came out at the end of last year. Um, a lot of schools still are not using it, but most schools are gonna be switching over to it. Now, the first thing I do wanna say about these textbooks is I don't work for JB Learning, um, but I love the Nancy Caroline book. I like it, okay? To me, it's easy to read most of it. Some of it's challenging, and we can talk about that, but most of it is pretty straightforward. Uh, there's a lot of really good information in here, and for the most part, I do feel like this textbook does follow uh, national standards. And that's something I also want to talk about. If you like this content and you want to support me and my channel, please subscribe, comment, let me know if there's anything I can help with or anything you want me to go over. Um, also, hit the like button, okay? So the algorithm can help share this. This does help my channel, so I'd appreciate that. Now, talking about the National Registry. First thing I wanna say is the National does not follow any of these, okay? The National Registry doesn't pick up a new edition of a textbook and say, hey, you know, let's go ahead and change our text questions or anything. The standard does uh, get updated and standards do change throughout the nation and these textbooks try to keep up with the standard. Okay, so the last textbook before the ninth edition was obviously the eighth edition and that came out in 2018. So it did take, you know, about four years for a new textbook to come out to update the standards. In this video, I'm going to be going over some of the changes that I've seen, uh, particularly in meds. So when a new textbook does come out, the first thing I'm so interested in checking out is the appendix or wherever they place meds, okay? And the eighth edition, it was in the back of the first volume. Uh, there was something called the appendix and that's where they had emergency medications. Now they actually have a chapter designated to these medications, okay? And there were some updates. Some things got removed, some things got changed. Um, I'm not gonna go over every single change, but I'm gonna go over the ones that I personally think are important that we need to know uh, let's talk a little bit about it. So some of these medications I find uh, are important as a paramedic. And of course there are others, but these are ones that I use. These are ones that I teach in paramedic school. Um, and let's take a look at how some of these medications may have changed. I'm also gonna be referencing this book uh, throughout as well. So one thing that was kind of interesting is activated charcoal um, was actually removed from the ninth edition. Okay, it's no longer in this chapter. By the way, the new chapter for meds is chapter 15. Um, it's kind of like the old appendix where you can kind of flip through and see all the meds. Acetaminophen or Tylenol, uh, it shows adult max, one gram, still 15 milligrams per kilogram. Nothing really changed there. Adenosine. Adenosine had, was always six and 12, right? That was the new American Heart Standard, but they did add, you can repeat the additional 12. So before, you know, uh, that whole changed when they went to just 112, that was the standard. And everyone kind of dropped the second 12 while well, the newest edition did bring it back. Um, I know a lot of protocols are saying to start with 12, but as of right now for a national standard, they're saying six, 12, and you could potentially perform the additional 12. Um, they're now saying 10 ml flush versus the old 20 ml flush. I always thought that was kind of weird. Like, why do I have to flush with 20 mLs? Um, especially when we don't really carry as many 20 ml syringes as we do pre-filled 10 ml syringes. It just made kind of made, made sense. Now take a look at this. Cut dose in half. If the patient taking perstentine, I've never heard of this medication, or Tegridol, if they, or if they have a transplanted heart, or if it's given through a central line. So I think that's pretty interesting information. 
Uh, they did not have that in the previous edition, so actually cutting the dose of adenosine in half, so doing three and six, um, if your patient meets this criteria. Pediatric still 0.1.2, nothing changed there. Albuterol, um, there, there's a little bit of a discussion in this textbook of, of going straight to five milligrams, which is an interesting talk since we've always done 2.5 and 3 mLs. Um, this is the first time I've ever seen the discussion of starting with five. So basically how the text reads, I'm going to read it right out of the textbook, respiratory distress 2.5 to 5 milligrams via nebulizer or 1 to 2 inhalations of a meter dose inhaler. If the patient has respiratory distress with signs of bronchospasm, give 5 milligrams via nebulizer or 6 puffs of their meter dose inhaler and repeat this dose with unlimited frequency for ongoing distress. Then it goes into hyperkalemia and all that good stuff. It used to say we would cut the dose in half to 1.25, but now it's saying if using a nebulizer and the patient weighs less than 20 kilograms, give 2.5 milligram dose every 20 minutes. Interesting. It's a change, right? So something that we got to uh, update how we're treating and what we're talking about in school. Amiodarone. Still 300, then 150, nothing changed there. 150 over 10, using a 10 drop set, nothing changed. Aspirin, no different. Uh, atropine, what, I was actually interested to see this one because atropine was actually updated in American Heart to one milligram, and they kept the 0 0.5, 0 0.5 to one, every three to five minutes up to three. All right, so they actually kept atropine the same. Organophosphate poisoning, two to four, and may need higher doses um, pretty standard. Calcium, stay the same, uh, 500 to 1 gram, uh, peds 20 milligrams per kilogram, no difference there. Calcium gluconate, I feel like this drug did go up, uh, in dosage. Remember, we're giving calcium gluconate for some of our hazmat, um, patient that ingests certain toxins in the toxicology chapter, calcium gluconate gets brought up a couple times. Uh, 1.5 to 3 grams over 5 minutes, 60 milligrams per kilogram over 10 minutes for pediatrics. And obviously we can make it into a gel as well. <clears throat> Plavix, 300 milligrams, and that is uh, by mouth. I actually did like how they laid out dextrose. They made it a lot easier to understand. Um, a lot of students do have questions regarding, hey man, how do I mix uh, D10, D25? Look what they did. They basically said, it comes packaged 25 grams of D50 and 50 mLs. That's just how the drug comes packaged. If we take that D50 and we add an additional 50 mLs, so make it a total of 100 mLs, we'll turn it into D25. Makes total sense, okay? I know a lot of people talk about dumping half and then drawing up saline. In the textbook, they're just saying add fluid to it to dilute it. Once we do, this is gonna be the drug dosage here on the side, two to four mLs per kilogram. And then for D10, they're taking that 25 grams of D50 and adding an additional 200 mLs to it to make D10. And then this is going to be the dose, 5 to 10 mLs per kilogram. Um, pretty awesome. I like it. I like it. If you just have uh, D25 prepackaged, it also had a dose for that, 1 gram per kilogram. Same as the old textbook. Uh, nothing changed there. Diltizem. This is an interesting change in the newest edition of the textbook. Um, it always was 0.25 milligrams per kilogram over two minutes, followed by a 0.35 milligram per kilogram. It now says if the patient is greater than 65 years old, the max dose that you can give of cardizem to that patient is 10 milligrams. Holy cow, man, that's a, that's a, that's a huge change. Um, that's a big update, and I'm very curious to see if... Uh, Protocols are going to be following that, you know. I have seen patients over the age of 65 receive as almost 30 
milligrams depending on their weight. So I'm very interested to see. Remember, push this drug slow, right? Second dose, it can double. Diphyhydramine or Benadryl, nothing changed here. Uh, actually, I'm actually curious to see for Benadryl because Benadryl was always 25 to 50 milligrams. Let's take a look. Yeah, anaphylaxis, allergic reaction, give one milligram per kilogram up to a max of 50. So it always said 25 to 50. Um, they, they changed it, right? They now actually put the pediatric dose, which was one milligram per kilogram. It was never like that for the adults. Um, so that is an update. For severe anaphylaxis, IV is preferred. Uh, for anti-emetics, use 25 to prevent vomiting. It's a good one. Uh, that's typically in uh, hyperemesis gravidrum, right? Your OB patients that keep vomiting, give them Benadryl. Dystonia, okay, dystonic reactions from antipsychotics, give up to 50 milligrams, no change there. And then uh, still one milligram per kilogram, max is 25 for peds. Pretty uh, standard. They got rid of uh, the two to 20 for dopamine, which is a good change. Uh, American Heart also went with that, starting at five mics, which we should be doing for chronotropic, inotropic, and dromotropic. Um, so it's a good update. This was an interesting one though, not intended for pediatrics. Um, almost positive, and I don't actually have an old textbook here with me, that they, the P dose, I wanna say was no different in that last textbook. But yeah, here in the new textbook, it's saying it's no longer intended. Why? Because we have epi, epi infusion. Take a look at this epi discussion. Holy cow, is it long, but it's uh, interesting. There were some changes, some updates. Anaphylaxis, still lateral thigh, every five minutes, 0.3. Um, racemic epi, they like really finally made sense of it. Um, they used to say like you had to uh, make, make a different concentration for it. And before you nebulize it, now it's just straight up five mLs of Epi 101 thousand, which to me sounds wild. But that is directly out of the textbook. That is very potent epinephrine, five milligrams of it. Because remember, it comes packaged in a one to one concentration. Five milligrams or five mLs of Epi 101 thousand nebulized. Consider an Epi infusion. 0.5 micrograms per kilogram per minute when cardiovascular collapse is evident after giving IM shots and 60 mLs per kilogram of fluid has been given. This is a crazy, crazy update for anaphylaxis. Um, let me explain a little bit why this is pretty wild. So Epi before was always two to 10 mics. Two to 10 mics, Per minute is what is what the uh, the dosage was, right? So now we're saying we're going to give 0.5 mics per kilogram. So let's say your patient weighed 100 kilograms. That means you're giving up to 50 mics a minute, which is crazy. That's five times the dose that we used to give for an infusion. And it's saying that we have to give up to 60 mLs per kilogram of fluid, which is crazy, man. They've upped, they've upped a lot of this stuff. Obviously, I would say just be very careful with your patient's lung sounds, um, depending on how bad their, uh, their breathing is and, and their symptoms. Obviously, everything's going to be very dynamic. But this is a, a, a very interesting update, man. 0.5 micrograms per kilogram per minute is what the, uh, the new standard is. For bradycardia, hemodynamic instability, give 0.2 micrograms per kilogram or per minute, um, lessening that dose. I, I did feel like that dose was high, but it, it is what it is. Uh, cardiac arrest, one milligram every three to five. We all know that's epi one and 10, right? No change. Uh, peds, less than 25 kilograms, 0.15 milligrams I am. So it's like that EpiPen Junior. Uh, if they're greater than 25 kilos, then we're gonna be giving them um, the adult dose of 0.3. Consider epi infusion, again, 0.5 micrograms per kilogram per minute, 
the same concept. So this is talking about for bradycardia and hemodynamic or hemodynamic instability, which means low blood pressure, right? So if your patient has bradycardia or low blood pressure and you're considering giving the epi infusion because nothing else worked for you, this is what it's saying. Okay, this is what it's talking about. We can still use it. Uh, for bradycardia, this is gonna be for our pediatrics. Um, if we are treating a, a, a child that's in bradycardia less than 60, obviously we're gonna be giving that oxygen, we're gonna be performing CPR, and we're gonna be giving our epi at 0.01 milligrams per kilogram every three to five minutes. That's old school, that nothing changed there. And the dose for peds uh, and cardiac arrest never changed. Good update. <clears throat> Little variation here of uh, dosage for Atomidate. Last textbook was 0.2 to 0.6 milligrams per kilogram, um, and it was not intended for pediatrics. Very interesting. Now it's 0.2 to 0.4, and they added kids into the mix. So that's a good update to see. Uh, Atomidate's an awesome drug. Just make sure you're pushing it slow. Fentanyl. Okay, fentanyl is a, uh, an interesting one that got updated. And the first thing you see here is palliative care. Wow, palliative care and respiratory distress, 25 mics and two MLs nebulized. So actually having your patient breathe in fentanyl versus just giving it IM or IV. So that was a big change uh, for respiratory distress. Interested to see what uh, protocol changes will be after seeing that. Pain management, one mic per kilogram, no different there. Max is total, 200, pretty standard. Flumazenel, not super shock to see it get removed from, uh, from the literature, but it did get removed. So did Lasix, another one that saw it coming. In 2018, Lasix, uh, Nancy Caroline book did announce no longer intended in pre-hospital settings. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I know I still, I'm still giving Lasix based on my protocols. You might still be giving Lasix based on your protocols. It's different, it all depends on your medical direction. Uh, but yes, these textbooks no longer uh, discuss the doses and when to use it or anything like that. They're trying to kind of pull it away from pre-hospital care. Okay, glucagon here. We got one milligram. I am or I N, that's an interesting way to give glucagon, and you keep repeating it until your symptoms resolve. So obviously we're talking about diabetes, uh, someone in hypoglycemia, we keep giving that one milligram over and over, uh, it says until those symptoms resolve. I would say maybe you should wait a little bit, especially if you're giving I am. Uh, glucagon is not known to be very fast, but look at beta blocker overdose, five, starting at five milligrams, and then wait five minutes, and then give another five milligrams. I think that uh, is better than just doing the one, wait, one, wait, one, you know? Just start off with five. Um, the problem is, I don't know if you know this, but glucagon's like super expensive. Uh, to buy a little red thing of glucagon, that's like $500. So this is a very expensive call. Uh, most EMS agencies don't even carry this much glucagon, so good luck giving it. Pediatrics, uh, it says greater than 20 kilograms, give what the one milligram. If they're less than 20, then we half it, 0.5. Oral glucose, 25 grams. Peds, one gram per kilogram. I always just say, just give the whole tube. Haldol, chemical restraint, five milligrams IV or 10 milligrams IM. Okay, that's interesting. I know a lot of a lot of talk about how dogs always I am, you know, using this for like a combative patient uh, as an antipsychotic. It says peds six to twelve, so we cannot give it under the age of six, and it's uh, one to three milligrams I am. Hydrocortisone. Hydrocortisone is a medication that we give for Addison's disease. Okay, gets, gets discussed in the endocrine chapter. Two milligrams per kilogram, max of 100 milligrams. And the IM is preferred. I think that was an update. I don't remember seeing IM being preferred for hydrocortisone. So, good to note. Cyanokit. 
five grams in 200 mLs, we give five grams over 15 minutes, 15 mLs per minute. Pediatric 70 milligrams per kilogram, that didn't change. Atrovent, up to three doses, stayed the same with the 0.5 milligrams or 500 micrograms. Ketamine, sedation, okay? Um, little different between sedation and chemical restraint, and I like the IN for pain management, but let's talk about it. Sedation, talking about maybe innovating the patient, one to two milligrams per kilogram over a couple minutes. If the patient's in pain and you're just treating the pain, we can give it intranasally at 0.5 milligrams per kilogram, and chemical restraint, two to four milligrams per kilogram, and that's I am only for chemical restraint. So remember what I was talking about, chemical restraint for somebody who's combative, uh, this is typically that dose you would be utilizing. It will definitely snow your patient. Peds, one milligram per kilogram. Uh, if you're going IV, if you're going IM, you can up the dose to three. Tordol, uh, for pain management, so this is an interesting change here. Um, Tordol, they, went, they were at 60 and 30, 60 IM, 30 IV. They've now cut that in half. Tordol can be dangerous, okay? Tordol can be dangerous, uh, especially on your kidneys. So they have to dose. Pediatrics, ages two to 16, they get ha uh, half a milligram per kilogram IV with a max of 15. And for febrile seizures, first time ever in a textbook that I've used for paramedic, have I ever seen this? If the child is unable to swallow Tylenol, we can now use uh, Tordol. One milligram per kilogram IV. Interesting change. Labetalol was removed. Interesting. So, Labetalol is not found inside the chapter 15, but it's funny because I did go through the uh, OB chapter and reading through because I was like, man, what are they saying now for uh, eclampsia, preeclampsia? Labetalol still gets discussed in that chapter, but they don't really talk about pushing it at all which is an interesting change. It just discusses mag. So that was an update in this textbook. Lidocaine, lidocaine, what? <clears throat> I know if you've been following American Heart, they've been uh, kind of pushing, bringing it back. Adult, one milligram per kilogram. The second dose is gonna be half that. Uh, we can use that as an antidysrhythmic instead of our amiodarone. Not saying you have to. If you're doing local anesthesia, 0.5 milligrams per kilogram. I don't know how many EMS providers are actually doing local anesthesia. Maybe sometime in the future, um, but right now, not so much. Mag sulfate, here we go. Severe hypertension. What is severe hypertension uh, in preeclampsia? It's greater than 160 systolic or greater than 110 diastolic. And it says uh, they have to have symptoms, which is interesting. So it says it's gotta be over 15 minutes that they have this high blood pressure and they have to have symptoms. Uh, then we're gonna be giving four grams over 20 minutes. I know that it's a, it's a, lot, a larger range, but I put 20 minutes in here for a reason. It makes my life a little bit easier on memorizing it. Okay, eclampsia, seizures after 20 week gestation, four grams over 20 minutes. No difference, okay? So preeclampsia and eclampsia are treated the exact same way. I like it. Torsades, two grams over five minutes. Asthma, two grams over 15 minutes. Let me see if I can change that really quick to 20 minutes, because I'd rather it be 20. Make my life easy. Status asthmaticus, uh, one to two grams over 15 to 30 minutes. So I'm just gonna update this on my my notes here to uh, 20 minutes, just so I have uh, continuity with everything. Makes my life a little bit easier to memorize stuff. Uh, pediatrics, torsades, uh, they're all over 20 minutes also. Uh, 50 milligrams per kilogram uh, for both. Easy to memorize. And I believe it is 25 to 50, so that was no change from the old textbook. Um, 
I just, I like to remember a number just so I'm not looking at ranges or trying to memorize ranges in my head. Mannitol, one gram per kilogram over 10 minutes. Wow. So mannitol is used for intracranial pressure that's not typically related to bleeding. It's, it's, it's based on edema, right? And it's always been one gram per kilogram over 30 minutes. So they cut the time down pretty significantly. Um, mannitol is not really a pre-hospital medication because we don't do CTs in the back of the truck. Uh, so still in the textbook, still a discussion, still something we need to know, especially if we're learning standards. Uh, I'm not saying you guys aren't gonna be working in the back of a truck. You might be working in a hospital or wherever, maybe critical care. So you might be given this mannitol. Just remember, you need a CT first. Methylprednisone or solumedrol, two milligrams per kilogram, still max of 125. I know everyone's still doing 125. Methylene blue, uh, one milligram per kilogram over five minutes. Versed, I know Versed always had a lot to discuss. Um, shivering from hypothermia, interesting addition there. 2.5 milligrams IV, IN, or IO. Seizures, 0.1 milligrams per kilogram over two minutes. Interesting. Whenever you hear people talk first said, they usually don't talk uh, milligrams per kilogram. And then palliative care, two to five milligrams IV. Whew. You imagine palliative care giving somebody five milligrams of Versed. Uh, you're probably gonna end up intubating that person. Just saying but that is straight out of the textbook, man. Uh, five milligrams IV, I am, I, that's, that's hilarious, man. It says chemical restraint, five milligrams. Makes total sense. Yeah, you're, you're about to drop somebody. But then it says, for palliative care, give them five milligrams IV. Um, for those of you who are learning and maybe just continue your education with EMS, I don't recommend uh, maybe giving total of five milligrams to somebody who's in short of breath that you're not looking to innovate. Um, Cause yeah, you can depress the respiratory drive. You're probably gonna end up bagging that person and ultimately uh, advancing that airway. Next one, morphine. Moderate pain, it's saying to go IM of 0.1 milligrams per kilogram. That's the old pediatric dose. Interesting. Somebody who has severe pain, we upgrade to an IV. That's funny. Somebody with a STEMI, two to four, slow. Yeah, that's old school, no different there. Two to four IV, uh, non-STEMI, which is odd. They should just put chest pain. But it's saying non-STEMI, one to five milligrams slow IV. Whatever, again, updates. Man, this is new stuff in the textbook. All right, coming down. Narcan, 0.4 to 2, no difference there. And it says up to four milligrams intranasal. I get it. You know, you don't want to keep, it's funny, man, people talk about giving uh, uh, Narcan. If you keep throwing Narcan up somebody's nose, you gotta think so much of it's gonna be coming out of their nose. So I, I agree to that. Should be getting a line if you need to continue giving it. I think the most Narcan I've ever given somebody is eight. I uh, have seen people give 10, so it, it does happen. Nitro 0.4, max 1.2. Surprised to see it, honestly. I thought they were going to increase the cap. Uh, they did not. It's either are they gonna increase the cap or are they gonna get rid of it, uh, but no, they're, they're sticking to their guns on 1.2 max. Norepi, or Levofed, 0.1 to 0.5 micrograms per kilogram per minute. Pretty standard dose. Uh, PEDS, 0.05 to 0.1 micrograms per kilogram per minute. Remember, dopamine is no longer intended, so we can now do epi infusion for PEDS or Levo. Whatever you carry. Zofran. Uh, so this is kind of an interesting one. 
Uh, first off, antiemetic, that's what everyone knows Zofran for, right? Four milligrams, no change there at all. Stimulant poisoning or overdose, eight milligrams IV over two minutes. I've never heard of this in my life. Uh, this is a new update in the textbook. I don't know the science behind it. Haven't done any research on it. So if anybody knows a little bit about it and you want to talk about it, please let me know. Um, I should probably do a little bit of research to figure out how this came about. Um, but yeah, eight milligrams over two minutes for somebody with a stimulant overdose. Pediatrics greater than six months to 14 years of age uh, as an anti-emetic. 0.15 milligrams per kilogram, max of four. Uh, used to be 0.1, so now they've increased it to 0.15 just to confuse us. Thank you. Oxytocin, still 10 units after delivery of the placenta. Remember that's IM. Two pam auto injector, uh, organophosphate poisoning. Remember that's your sledgem or your dumbbells acronym. 600 milligram auto injectors, still giving up to three, so 1.8 grams. No difference there. Rocaronium, one milligram per kilogram. Sodium bicarb, one milli equivalent per kilogram. They kind of emphasized on how 4.2%, so if you do carry uh, pediatric sodium bicarb, the, not the 8.4, the large box, it's the smaller box, it's saying it's for neonates only. I thought that was interesting. Uh, I always thought it was for kids. But yeah, they're saying for neonates only in the textbook. And again, that's going to be the exact same thing. Uh, one milli equivalent per kilogram. Uh, Tributylene still 0.25 sub Q. And it wasn't even in this textbook, which I thought was interesting. Seeing the whole change with COVID and how we were trying to get away from nebulizers. And now we're coming back. So I wasn't sure if it was going to get brought up, but it did not. Thiamine. Uh, 100 milligrams slow IV over five minutes. And it says it's not really intended for peds. You have to call medical control. Interesting. TXA becoming a really hot topic. A lot of people are talking about it. Uh, one gram over 10 minutes. I have heard a lot of protocols being updated to two, mil two grams over 10 minutes. Um, but as of right now in the textbook, one gram over 10 minutes, not recommended for kids. Uh, straight out of the book. And it looks like our last drug, Zantac. Um, Zantac I have in here because we're given some sort of Pepsid or something for allergic reactions. Zantac was not in this textbook. Um, so I'm not even going to go over it. But interesting that this is not all the changes that were inside the new ninth edition. There are some other meds that are in here that I'm not saying that you can't, that you're not supposed to know about. Okay. This is the hard part about going to school and, and depending on who your instructor is, they might like point out some drugs and say, Hey, you only need to know this many, uh, on this list. What did I have? 48. You can go, there's probably a hundred in here, right? A lot of these medications we don't use pre-hospital. Uh, a lot of these medications you're not going to really see. But I'm not saying that you won't be, or you won't see them on an exam, okay? Most of these, just about all these medications that I just discussed today, you will be using in scenarios. You're gonna be using them in the pre-hospital setting, okay? For the most part, I did mention how mannitol, we don't get to really see much play with it. Maybe a couple other meds you don't really see much of. Um, but these, this list is what I think is probably the most important meds to kind of go through in the new textbook. If there's any of these meds that you want me to go over, maybe a little bit more in detail or talk about something else with this textbook, I'm kind of coming up with a couple ideas. One of them being, I would like to go through the textbook with you guys uh, and post it here on YouTube and just basically say what each, is in each chapter, things that I find that are important to know, things that I have seen on tests or heard people talk about and maybe some ideas. If that's something that you'd be interested in hearing or seeing, let me know. Again, uh, like, subscribe, comment, ask questions. I'm here for you. Best of luck and I'll see you in the next one.